Hello everyone, welcome to this holiday scenery of the next episode of Dying to Know More. Recently, you flooded us with thousands of comments about one thing, health bars. So today, together with my guests, we will talk more about user interface and experience of Dying Light to See Human. Hello, Agatha. Hello. Are you ready to reveal some secrets? Sure, but to be honest, there are not that many secrets there. User experience is all about finding the balance between maximizing the fun that game is giving to the players, but also making it more immersive, especially when it comes to first-person gameplay. Okay, so can you tell us more about it? What is your main goal in creating user interface in Dying Light to Stay Human? When we are creating UI, the most important thing for us is to make this game as easy as possible to understand for the players. And this is why we gathered thousands of hours of recording from the playtest and gigabytes of data to help us find this perfect mix. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? It is challenging, of course, but after analyzing all of those data, we find different profiles of our gamers. For example, there are those players who are more experienced in action games. For them, they prefer more immersive experience, so they would like to turn off every possible HUD element. But on the other hand, there are also those players that love information. And for them, every possible option that can be turned on is more informative. Those players come mostly from, let's say, MMO or RPG-driven backgrounds. They love to have every possible widget turned on on the hat to see what's the progress of their quest or what the enemy health bar is. Okay, and what about player skill level? We also have less skilled player, and during the playtest, then they enjoyed and even ask us for any additional help that UI can provide them. The most important thing that we need to think about everyone. And how do you find the balance between all these needs? I don't think that there is a one profile that fits all the players. No, there isn't. That's why it is really important for us to give some option to the player, the possibility to customize their hut, but in doing that, also their experience. Mm -hmm. So can you give us an example of this customization? Health bars, for example. Yeah, it, you don't want them? No problem. We won't force you to use it. And this is a message to everyone that was concerned about it. You will be possible to just switch it off. Oh, that's cool. I read a lot of comments about that. Yes, and we also read almost all of them. So if I am a player who focuses on immersive gameplay, will I be able to switch off all of the unnecessary elements that I don't like? Yes, we are trying to make the UI and HUD the most adjustable to your needs. And this is also really important in case of accessibility. You know, Dying Light to Stay Human is a very dynamic game with dynamic gameplay, dynamic music, and of course, some elements of the HUD also needed to be dynamic, like, for example, quest lock. And for some players, it's really cool to have all of those dynamic and immersive elements turned on. The other would prefer to just have the statics element of the hat. Mm -hmm. And you said dynamic quest lock. What is that? For example, this quest lock is shown only when you are inside the area that this specific quest is going on, or you are doing some specific action connected to this particular quest. But of course, if you feel the need to see some more information about it, you can simply hold the button and the quest lock will appear on the screen. Okay, so all of the actions that are happening around me in my gameplay also will be reflected on the screen. Yes, and this is exactly why we need to test everything many times with many different people. Even the latest preview events give us some data about it and after analyzing this, we find out that sometimes less is more. What do you mean? Well, there is this one person, a content creator. After his previous session, he made a video that's showing how cool and great he is while parkouring. So on this gameplay, he's doing one combo after another, and this small widget that is popping up on the screen while you're gaining parkour experience point 
on this video is visible all the time for almost three minutes when he was striking one comb after another. It was insane. Okay, so what does it tell you from the user experience perspective? It's telling me that this element, however really rewarding for some players, it's just another boring HUD notification for another. Well, I mean, this element is really great, you know, because it was created with our audio team to be aligned with dynamic music that we have in game. But after this preview, we decided to do some changes in that. What I want to say is that UI needs to be useful and clear for everybody. Everyone needs to feel at home, like everything is in the right place on their screen. Okay, got it. So give me three elements of the perfect UI. <laughs> Only three? Okay, no problem. So let's see. The first one I've already told you. It's the customization and possibility to adjust the experience to what you need. The second one, I would say the UI should be familiar. It's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about to showing to the players those things that are important for them and that are understandable for them. Mm -hmm. And the last one? Well, the last one, never assume that the players are as familiar as the game as we are. You know, while working on the game and developing it, we spent thousands of hours playing our game. So some of the features are really easy and obvious for us. It's not like that for all of the players. Okay, so I can see that even if the work on the game is finished, your job never ends. Yes, because every comment is really important for us. And we are really listening to our community, as we did with the health bars. Every comment is important, even and especially after the release. Because, let's see, right now the game was tested by hundreds, maybe thousands of players, but after the release we will hear from millions of them. And there might be some conflicting opinion. Oh, I see. So how far can you go with compromising it? Far, but not too far. You know, when we are receiving some conflicting opinion, the thing that we need to look for is not to sacrifice our game design vision. But don't worry, we have our ways to do that. Okay, so I'm not. But you've mentioned before accessibility. Are there any options in Dying Light to stay human? Absolutely. Dying Light 2 is complex, open-world, first-person RPG games. That means some limitation, but we really want to make it accessible for people with disabilities. Okay, I see. We do that by listening to people and analyzing their behaviors. This is what's really important to me and in the user experience itself, that it should really suit the people. Mm -hmm. Can you give us any examples of accessibility in Dying Light 2? Sure. For example, we have some option to customize the visuals of the dialogue. So the size of the uh, text, background color, or the color of the speaker names for those with visual and hearing disabilities. There's also possibility to switch between tapping to holding the button for quick time events for those with motion disability. And we also add a couple of profiles for color blindness people, but we are still exploring this area. Okay, but what about, for example, left-handed people? Oh yes, we are going to have a special control profile for left-handed people too. And once the Dying Light fan starts playing and sharing their experience, we are planning to add even more. We can't wait to hear their feedback. Okay, thank you, Agata. You shared a lot of information with us. Thanks, Paulina, for having me here. And as always, thank you very much for watching us today. And remember that Dying Light to Stay Human will be released really, really soon. So don't forget to pre-order it at preorder.dyinglightgame.com. See you soon. Happy holidays. And remember to stay human.